Batman and Superman team up frequently for wild adventures, but what if they really teamed up, like became one being? How powerful could they be, and what enemy would be so strong that this needed to exist? This is Comic Story. I read comic books to you in an audio drama format. We make slight alterations, but just consider us your daily audio drama about superheroes. Now let's get started with Batman Superman World's Finest from 2022, issues 1 through 5. The world begins to change around our heroes, and Faust says thanks to his new master, he doesn't need the staff. The Devil Neja is real. The army that he is building is terrifying. For he imbues great power into those who serve him. And all he demands in return is the eternal damnation of his enemies, sending them to the pits of hell itself. Soon the demons of hell begin to crawl out, binding the two of them, and Batman shouts, No! This is magic! This can't really be- uh, Superman! Where are you? However, Superman is- unaffected by anything going on around him. Batman yells for him to snap out of it, but as Superman concentrates, he begins to bring his finger to his lips, shushing Superman. He then reaches for one of Batman's batarangs, throwing it, sticking Faust in the arm. As the world turns back, Superman says the depravity of his imagination turns his stomach. You would never torment us unless there was something you could revel in. All I needed to do was listen to a fourth heartbeat. Now, I'm going to fix Billy and... But then Faust passes out, almost as if on command, as Superman looks back, asking if everyone is okay. Batman says that his mind is clouded. It was so real. It was all very convincing. How did you know that we weren't actually in hell and this was all a dreamscape? But then Batman laughs to himself. <laughs> of course, you don't believe in hell. Suddenly, Billy's mouth returns and he yells, There's no escape! There's only death to your kind at the hands of my soldiers! So says Devil Neja. But as Devil Neja's influence fades, Superman says that they need to help the others. If Devil Neja could do this, but back in the past where Robin and Supergirl are trying to find the answers, they continue to evade the attacks of the warriors of Xi while shouting that they have nothing to do with Neja and that this is all a mistake. But seeing as they are easing on their attacks, Robin and Supergirl fight back long enough to put each side at a standstill. And then Robin takes off his mask. We are not here to fight! All we want to know is how to beat Neja. One of the heroes says the girl flies at lightning speed, and yet she did come to them extending a hand. They should let them speak, but stay cautious. The one keeping Supergirl pinned by magic lets her go, and then sits, stating that they deem them as legends. What do they truly know of them? Robin names each of the heroes. Shiyu of the River Waters. Hao, the one who channels the sun. Kongi, the commander of the winds. And Daikui, one of the forces of Earth. They simply don't know more than that, though. His name is Robin, and this is Supergirl. They have traveled back in time from the far-flung future where Devil Neja has apparently risen anew. After a few moments of pause, she says that this much they will share. Laboring for months in a hidden area on a distant island, an entire village exhausted three generations worth of magic in order to construct a special tomb that will hold Devil Neja. It was their sworn task to force the beast inside, and for five days and nights they warred continuously. They managed to herd him into his prison, but they were not done. There was the matter of sealing the door. Robin says, okay, the last part doesn't seem hard. What aren't you telling us? And all the warriors are suddenly struck with a saddened look. Meanwhile, back in the present, Superman and Batman reach Central City and break apart so that Superman can assist the Flash, and Batman helps Wonder Woman. As Superman gets close, he sees Flash running at Mirror Master, telling him, I always know which portal you're hiding in. It's the one without a mirror. And Superman yells, WAIT! IT'S A TRAP, Barry! But as the Flash runs headfirst into the portal, Mirror Master shatters it, stating, SPOILERS! IT IS A TRAP! Nearby, Batman jumps through the clay-covered block, shouting for Wonder Woman to answer him. But as he finds her encased in clay, there's a laughter coming out of the nearby alleyway. Dr. Alchemy steps out, stating that from the clay the Amazon arose, AND FROM THE CLAY SHE SHALL BE RETURNED! As Dr. Alchemy turns his attention to Batman, Mirror Master turns his attention to Superman and begins to chase him with Neja's magic mirror, telling him, You better run fast! This one is courtesy of Devil Neja! Seeing Batman dodge Dr. Alchemy's attacks, he tells him to start making his way up the building. He has an idea that might take care of both villains. Superman shoots by Batman with the magic mirror behind him, but Dr. Alchemy's attack hits it, shattering the portal. Batman spins back around, punching Dr. Alchemy. Sorry I cut saving you close. Batman catches the stone. 
You didn't have to save me. I had four ways to dodge that. As the two begin to catch their breath, Hal Jordan flies down. Don't worry, guys. I just got word that Nez is no longer using villains as soldiers. Batman turns. Great to hear. Wait. Word from where? <laughs> what do you think, Batman? And he encases the two of them in a construct prison. I don't understand. How does Neja know who all the heroes and villains are? Or who else to conscript? Alfred, come in. Has anyone accessed the Justice League servers recently? Alfred responds. I'm looking now, Master Bruce. But I must say, everything seems to be just as it should be. Behind him, Devil Neja smiles as he places a hand on Alfred's shoulder. Back at the fight, Superman is struggling to break the bars of their construct prison, when suddenly a giant construct saw blade rips through, cutting into Superman's leg, launching him across the street. He begins to pick himself up, but Hal uses his ring to stop him. And Batman asks, how is he doing this? Your ring's energy is primarily about energy constructs. The only way that you'd be affecting Superman this easily is if you were augmented by magic. But before Batman could realize it, Devil Neja grabs him from behind, holding his sword to his throat. This is the Batman, a creature of paper, flesh, and reedy bone. Who are you to stand amongst gods? What do you want? And Neja tells him, I want everything. For nearly 4,000 years, entombed by magic, I was denied a world that was rightfully mine. Thus, magic would be the key to my release. But I knew not a spell that could free me. So I was forced to create one, ruin by ruin, syllable by syllable, in over three millennia, driven solely by the nightmare of a world bereft of my guidance. I preserved. When I emerged, I was prepared for the opposition. Instead, I was nauseated by how little civilization had advanced. A world pitifully divided. A world in need of discipline. So with the power of possession, I began seizing implements of change. Now, be gone, insect. As Devil Neja throws Batman aside, Hal gets ready to deliver the final blow to Superman when suddenly his attack is deflected. Superman asks how, and Batman sits up. I turned oxygen into chromium, courtesy of Dr. Alchemy's Philosopher's Stone. You're looking a bit rough. As Superman tries to banter back, Superman tells him, we need to think of something or we're finished. The stone is already cracking under pressure. At that moment, Batman says, Willpower. That's what controls the Green Lantern's ring. How much do you think that it's compromised in a consciousness under someone else's control? Exactly. Still more power than ours individually. But if we could combine ourselves. The two begin to concentrate their willpower against Hal Jordan's attack. And just as the Philosopher's Stone is breaking, the two begin to scream! And Hal's ring is yanked off of his finger. In a flash of green light, a single body stands. One that is a combination of Superman and Batman. Hal's body falls to the ground and Neja walks up. I can see that I chose this champion poorly. No matter. It won't happen again. I still have work to do. Attack! With more heroes under Neja's influence, they all begin to attack the unified mind of Superman and Batman. Using exploding magical batterings, they target Firestorm and Red Tornado. Then they focus on Martian Manhunter. Black Canary screams, but the two put up a construct mask over her mouth and magically weighted shoes on the Kid Flash. Seeing the ring's powers quickly dropping, trying to hold them together, Batman says that they need to hurry and end this. And they fly over to Neja, punching him into the ground, then rocketing off into space with him in tow. Neja struggles to free himself, but as they fight, they fall back down to the earth with Superman and Batman burning the remaining energy of their combined form, splitting back into their original selves. Neja grabs the two by their necks. I was actually concerned for a moment. This is what I get for relying too much upon others. I should have come to you directly from the start. Now, die! As Neja begins to crush their necks, he's suddenly hit by a speeding Supergirl, stating that she and her friends say hi. Supergirl's punch sends Neja exactly where she wanted, to meet with the Doom Patrol as they arrive to where Neja's tomb lies hidden. As Supergirl stands back up in the rubble, she struggles, stating that he's going to recover. We don't have much time! Listen! And Batman stares for a moment. Wait, where's Robin? Just listen to me! The Warriors of G! They confirmed that the tomb alone can hold Neja. That door can be permanently shut by one of us, but it has to be shut from the inside. 
Cliff chimes in, wait, 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 are you saying the only way to keep Neja locked in the crypt is for somebody to stay in with him? Supergirl reaches for an object, stating that she doesn't like it, but that's exactly what she's saying. She can hear his heartbeat. He's coming too. We don't have much time. The Warriors of G gave her this enchanted talisman. To ensure that Neja can never escape again, it has to be placed inside of the door. Larry walks up. All right, who's ready to save the world and spend eternity in the room with Satan? And Superman chimes in. I will. He gets ready to take the talisman, but Batman stops him. No, you won't. You're powerless against magic. Maybe if... And Rita tells everyone, no, absolutely not. The world needs both of you. Cliff, Larry, and I, we're expendable. Yeah, it's kind of in the name. Right, we're the Doom Patrol. One of us. But then Supergirl screams, telling everyone, just shut up! It's not a time for discussion, all right? I'll be the one to make the sacrifice. It's what I deserve after I... And Batman and Superman look at each other. Where is Robin? Tears begin to pour out of her eyes. I... I don't know. When suddenly she's blasted to the ground as Superman is floating up. It really doesn't matter. As it would turn out, I should have possessed Superman all along. Superman races in with Supergirl colliding with him to keep him back from the others. But soon, Neja's influence begins to seep into Rita and Larry. Supergirl tries to choke Superman, telling him to shake it off. You're stronger than this! Don't let Neja control you! But as they're fighting, Rita grabs Batman, beginning to crush him. And Cliff gets an idea. He sees Neja watching the events and rushes over, swinging, breaking his concentration. And everyone under Neja's influence begins to shake it off. Supergirl thinks back to something that was said before she came back to the present. Neja's sorcerous defenses were designed to adapt to any attack from any known science, every known force, every known element on the Earth. And she calls out that that's it. Neja is only prepared for things from his era. Robot tech, the metals that Cliff is made of, the energies that didn't exist in his time. Those are his weaknesses! But in her time of realizing this, Supergirl sees that Superman has left all the way back to his Fortress of Solitude. Back with the others, Neja's magic helps him prepare and deflect the current age tech, and soon he begins to turn the tide in his favor, punching back and deflecting most of the attacks aimed at him. But then a voice calls out to him, stating, If you can adapt to all of Earth's technology, let's see how you can handle Kryptonian. We don't need a tomb. Let the Phantom Zone be your prison. Superman points the Phantom Zone projector and fires, with Neja trying to hold it back. What is this? No, you will bow down before me. You will bow down to Devil Neja! And as Devil Neja fades away into the Phantom Zone, Cliff shouts out, Nice! Gold star for the big blue! Superman tells him that it was a team effort. And he can start to see that Neja's magic is wearing off across the globe. But we still have a situation. Kara? She begins to tremble, stating that on their way back from the past, there was a time storm. It jolted them hard, and Robin... I tried to hold on, but Robin lost his grip and fell into the time stream. Where? When? And Supergirl tells him that that's just it. There's absolutely no way of knowing. He could literally be anywhere. I'm so sorry, Batman. As Batman stares, Superman says that they're going to find a way. We always do. Let's just focus on... But that's when there's an explosion of light, and Neja begins to tear through the residual tachyon portal, shouting, You cannot keep me away! Oh god, he's still adapting! He's cracking open the damn Phantom Zone! And Larry asks, what do they do now? Batman, Superman, and Supergirl all look at the talisman, and Superman is already ahead of them, grabbing it, launching himself and Neja into the tomb, slamming the door shut. Batman calls out to Superman, beating on the door, telling him to get out. You can't win! He was counting on you going in! Supergirl flies up, yelling to listen to her. For God's sake, if they open up the door, they will free an evil that cannot be contained. And Superman snaps back. Why didn't you? Supergirl stops him. What? Stop Superman? Rescue Robin? Do you think that I'm not going to ask myself those questions for the rest of my life? I loved him too. Cliff separates them. Look, we won. Okay? It's not always clean, but it's over and the danger's gone. We can mourn later. Right now, the world needs to know who gave his life to save it one last time. Cliff begins to walk away and he looks back to see Batman looking for something. Batman is sifting through the dirt. It's gone. Wait. Where's the Phantom Zone projector? He turns towards the crack that Neja used to force his way out, and he tells Larry, Crack that open! Quickly! Negative Man shoots out of Larry, grabbing a hold of the crack, and begins to rip it back open. And just as he does, a hand begins to reach out. Everyone grabs a hold of the arm, and Batman yells, Pull! We can't lose him again! Pull! 
And as Negative Man's power fades, Superman comes tumbling out and he laughs. <laughs> Took you guys long enough. Superman helps him out, telling him that it was a hell of a gamble. Superman tells him that he was depending on Batman to notice something was missing. It wasn't a gamble. It was a plan. When he was inside, he shot himself with the projector before Neja could do any real damage. And as he was disappearing, he destroyed the projector on the way out, leaving Neja trapped in the tomb. Supergirl rushes up to hug Superman, telling him to never do anything like that again. And Superman laughs, stating that they should make sure that no one ever has. They also have a mountain of rubble at their disposal. As Superman and Supergirl get to work burying Neja's tomb, Rita walks up telling them that she supposes that that's that. She speaks for the whole team when she says that it's been an honor working with him and Superman. But more importantly, they want Batman to know that they have the Doom Patrol's deepest condolences about Robin. But those words are falling on deaf ears. Because while Batman is looking over the mountain, he's already formulating his plan to rescue Robin. And there you guys have it, the first part of this. Now, I didn't realize this was going to be multi-part at first because I heard it got canceled and assumed it ended here. And then I realized we have a giant cliffhanger about Robin missing. So I looked into it and it looks like there's going to be two more stories basically resolving the Robin thing. Two issues involving this storyline. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll know when we conclude this and go find Robin through the time stream. And also make sure you check out our YouTube memberships and Patreon. We send early access videos over there all the time. Thank you and have a good day.